Hi, I'm Jesse with Canada Perspective, and in this video, we're going to cover why it's important that a, a client purchase an e collar or one of the e collars that I recommend. So, the, there are varying levels, uh, output levels, meaning power, um, of, of e collars. Okay? So, I like to think of them as like low, medium, and high. Uh, so, like for example, uh, the, there's a dog tra IQ, which is meant for like a 15, dog, a 15 pound dog and under. That would be low. Uh, then you could have like a medium low, which would be um, uh, a dog tra 280C, which is meant for a dog that is 35 pounds and under. Then there's medium, which is a dog tra 2300, which is a 70 pound dog and under. Then there's high, which is the dog tra black edition, okay? Which is meant for a 70 pound dog and over. So the reason why this is important is, you know, when I do my consultations and I uh, evaluate the case, I'm not just thinking about the size of the dog, okay? I'm not just thinking about, okay, this is a 20 pound dog um, and technically all she needs is a, or he or she needs is a dog to 280C, but if that dog is reactive and severely reactive, I have to account to, for the behavior and uh, how much more power that dog may need to curb the behavior. So for example, and I, and I talked about this dog in another video, um, I had a case, the dog's name is Georgia. She was about a 25, 20 pound dog who was severely reactive, hyper vigilant, uh, you know, being reactive to a dog 100 feet away, even further. Um, and I told the owner during the consultation, you're gonna wanna use the dog to black edition. It's meant for, you know, a Rottweiler type dog, but your dog is so intense with the reactivity I would rather have it and not need it. So, you know, she followed my instructions. She got the Dr. Black edition. She didn't question it and she followed the training as instructed. And it did take us, I think, until the fourth class until we, uh, I, no, no, actually by, until the third class and by the fourth class, I had established that we had curbed the reactivity, okay? Um, and this case was very severe and that we, the reason why it took up until the fourth class is I had to uh, work the owner through all the steps so that the owner could witness and experience everything that wasn't working, okay? So once we had the baseline down for the reactivity, uh, there came a point where we did a controlled, so the first week we were at Oz Park, we did outside, it was very difficult. So then the second class, because the reactivity was so bad, the second class we did at my facility, we did the second part of HEAL. We also did controlled contacts with a, with a board and train at the time uh, to spark the reactivity and work on it in a controlled context. Uh, then she took a couple of weeks and then she still had some issues with reactivity. We went and met at Oz Park, did a walk around the park, and we ended up having to do corrections at the max power, which is 127, uh, for every time the dog was reactive. And I told her, go and practice that for two to three weeks. And then two to three weeks after that, uh, we had our fourth class and the dog was no longer reactive, okay? In this case, um, uh, wrapped up a program at least a couple of months ago now, and then it, and on her last class, she had already it had already been a couple of months since she had seen reactivity from the beginning. So we had already we had curbed the behavior, but it took a very high level correction because of the dog's intensity. So I'm not just accounting for how big your dog is. We also have to account for the the thickness of your dog's coat, um, uh, your, the dog's personality type, the breed type. Uh, power breeds are are built to take more pressure. They typically require more output. Uh, and then of course, the behavior that we're working on. If that dog, Georgia, was simply a obedience case, I would have told her, just get the dog to 280C, because it's meant for a 35 pound dog and under, your dog is only 20 pounds, this is just obedience, okay? But because she had a reactivity and I recognized it was very severe reactivity, I told her, go with the dog to black edition, because if you get a, um, lower output collar and it doesn't work, we're either stuck with a tool that's not gonna work uh, or you have to buy a whole new e-collar system because you can't return the first system and now you're spending you know, 300 bucks more. Uh, I go, I'd rather just have it and not need it because <clears throat> the dog's black edition is perfectly safe to use on a dog that's 20 pounds. I could put it on my eight pound chihuahua, it's perfectly safe because it's more output. It simply means we get more from less, okay? So on a lower output collar, we could be at 80, and it would be the equivalent of 30 
uh, on the high powered uh, collar. Okay, so <clears throat> these are things that I account for. So it's very important that we get the collar that we're needing. I've had a couple of recent cases in, in, in the year of 23 where they got a different model because they were trying to save money and didn't want to you know, return it. And then we didn't get as far as we were wanting because we didn't have the correct collar. Um, and you know, my methods are tailored to work when we have the correct tools. So if I have the correct tools, um, then we can get the job done. But if I don't have the correct tools, then I don't know how far we're gonna go, okay? So it's best to just commit and spend the extra few, you know, 50 to 100 bucks that it may cost to get the appropriate collar and just know that, okay, uh, if worse comes to worse, I have the best tool there is that Jesse recommended, I'm, I'm gonna be okay, all right? Otherwise, we're gambling and then we might end up even wasting classes. So if we have a low upper collar and I'm like, you shouldn't have gotten that collar, you need this collar instead, and then we have the first two to three classes and we're stuck, we're not getting the results that we're looking for. Now the owner's not only having to purchase or try to exchange their collar and that's gonna you know, take two or three weeks of time, uh, now they've also wasted two to three classes with me and each class is around $250. Now we're $500, $750 in of wasted money and time because we didn't have the appropriate tool, okay? So trust me, um, don't worry about the stuff that you read online. You know, I've had clients like, oh, but this says it's, you know, the only difference is this. When you've trained as many dogs as I've trained in 12 years, every caller um, is perceived differently by the dog, is received differently by the dog. Um, uh, you know, we're accounting for the fact that we're working on behaviors a lot of times because I specialize in uh, aggression. I'm dealing with a lot of dog reactivity, a lot of human aggression, dog aggression. We also just don't want to question, like, am I going to have the ability to turn, to shut off my dog's aggression with the training tool that I have? You just want to have the collar and know that it's going to be able to get done. Okay? So, uh, trust me, when I recommend a collar, you don't want to do anything less than what I recommend, and you don't want to go and purchase something else that says it's the equivalent of, uh, because it is not. Okay? Uh, I'm Jesse with Canine Perspective. Thank you for watching.